All right, van behind me is brand new from the dealership. Got a bit of an unfortunate circumstance for the customer, which I hope they can get reimbursed for, for what we're about to do. But I, like right now, okay, I'm just gonna be honest. I'm not even gonna try and make us money or make us sales here. But if you bring it to us to do it properly, we're gonna be cheaper than the dealership to do it. But you know it's gonna be done right because when the dealership does things, this is a perfect example of what happens. This van is literally brand new and it's like three weeks old. Okay, lithium battery that isn't IEC 62619 certified, and this is their airtight box, right? I don't know about you, but I don't think that's airtight. There's no ceiling here, that is not an airtight box for the battery. I haven't even got the lid off to check the fusing of it yet. Okay, we've got the lid off of the battery box. You've got cables that come out of the side of the box, no fuse on it, non-compliant. This other little active, again, no fuse on that one either, non-compliant. This battery box is not an airtight box, it is not sealed, it is not compliant, the battery is not IEC 62619 certified, it is not compliant. <sighs> what we're gonna do, is to put this battery in an air sealed box and vent it out the same side ventilation, but we're actually gonna seal it. And we're gonna put in a new 100 amp hour lithium that's actually compliant, or has the IEC 62619 certification. I don't know how much she spent on getting this lithium upgrade done, but she should be getting a full refund for whatever we charge her because it's, it's against the law to sell the van that they've sold. Um, and we see this all too much. I hate seeing customers get screwed around by caravan manufacturers and them having to pay to get things done properly after the fact that it should have been sold as a compliant vehicle in the first place. I'll show you how we're gonna rectify this and exactly what we do to rectify it. So this circuit here was actually added uh, for an Anderson plug at the front aftermarket, so like a week ago. It's got a fuse on it, but then the four factory ones, no fusing. Like I literally just cut off those terminals and that's it. Battery box was Velcro strapped in with a Velcro strap like this. The wiring will state that the battery must not move more than 25 mil in any direction when the force two times the weight of the batteries applied to the center of gravity so i'm not sure if that velcro would have stopped it from moving less than 25 mil and like the, the modifications that they've made to the box to try and like fully air seal it and they've just put rubber around the rim like it's a bit ridiculous to be honest um and then when i was looking up the specs on this battery to see if it is certified you actually can't find the specs for it anyway so i'm pretty sure it's a battery that they had sitting in there workshop for ages and then just decided to use it for a job to get some money out of it. Be ridiculous. So what we're gonna do now, put our CNC cut battery box in, put our battery in, put fuses on those circuits, comply the vehicle, so all the power points. Uh, we'll make sure they're all double pole, and test the RCD to make sure it's compliant. Or well, actually, and while I've got you, I haven't really had a chance, but a loose bus bar I haven't had much of a chance to look in here, but this is where all their 12 volt wiring is. I'll pull that lead out, the orange lead, and have a bit more of a look at that. Okay, so we've got our battery in now. We've put a stopper on it, so the battery can't go anywhere. It is solid as in there. The only way the battery's gonna move is if the box gets pulled out of the floor. We've done our vent. All right, we've moved our fusing and actually fused all three circuits. There, I haven't put the fuses in because we're going to seal them up everything. So we're going to seal up that, seal up these two. Then I'll put the fuses in, turn everything back on, put the lid on, and away we go. Box in, box sealed, fuses, the vent output sealed. So now the air that's inside this box cannot physically leak into where like my hand is, into this habitable space. All of it is going straight out the wall as per AS3001 installation laws. I'm gonna get a sticker kit now, put the sticker kit on the box in the relevant areas for like all the electrical bits and bobs. 
and then this one will be done. But again, if you're buying a van that was manufactured or the electrical system had been modified after November the, November the 20th, I think, 2023, the whole electrical system has to be up to scratch with these laws. Now, this customer is going to have a bit of a, who knows, um, trying to get the money that we're charging them to do properly out of the manufacturer that made the van, considering it's a three week old van. But they promised her that it had been done to compliance. So now I have to write them up a report to say, yeah, no, what you did is not compliant. I'm here for the customer. I don't care about manufacturers. Manufacturers do a lot of bad work and it gives us work. So I'm here for the customer, for what to look out for, um, because we see it time and time again where they get stung, spending money they should not have to spend, or they're spending money on the same stuff that we can supply at a higher quality for the same price, if not less, all the time. And like this customer again, three week old van, and she's already complained to me and said like, they're after sale service, they don't wanna know her at all. So anyway,